Hello, hello. I don't see anybody here yet, but that's okay. Give me a chance to get myself set up here. Uh, let's see here. It's been a while since I've done any of this, so I have to reacquaint myself with all the steps to go through. And there we go. Okay, so... trying to do is get over to my own channel so I can um, there we go watch the chat it says some, one person's watching hi Liz I got here earlier today so maybe I won't run over you I haven't done this in so long that I have forgotten what's going on Jeanette Shelly hello hello happy to see you here Hopefully volume's good, lighting's good. I'm gonna have to figure something out because right now the lights are going right in my eyes. Let's see if we move these a little bit. Hopefully it won't make it too much darker for you guys, but. Thank you, Liz. Hi, Anna. I miss being here and you know what it's like. You get out of the habit of doing something and, uh, and then you sort of freak out and you forget how to do it and I watched Tracy Fox's video this morning where she came back to doing videos after a long time. And, and it's just, you know, I was like, okay, I got to just be brave, put on my big girl pants and do it. I don't know why, because you guys are always so supportive. There's no reason I shouldn't be, you know, excited about coming back here, but um, you know, you watch a lot of other videos and you think, oh, I don't have anything new to share. So everybody says, it doesn't matter if you don't have anything new to share, just come on and chat. So I have nothing new to share. <laughs> oh, the lighting is good. Okay. That's awesome. I have three, of those, I don't know if you saw my video recently on uh, lighting the space, but I have three big hardware store work lights and they've got these big silver reflectors and they're finally set up where I don't have to move them. Now all I need is a different power strip that has a rocker bar on it so I can easily reach them because my desk is so deep, I can't reach back there. But we had to take everything apart because the electricians were here last week uh, working on the sunroom. Yay. So we're, we're close to getting done on that. And while they were here, I wanted them to put four outlets right at the base of my desk, because if I want to plug in my heat gun or something, there's just, there's just not enough space and the records all over the place. So my husband spent like an hour and a half yesterday helping me reroute everything so that, cause I would get my feet all tangled up in the cords and then I would pull everything off the desk. And that was, that was not good. So what I have is <laughs> I had gotten a lot of papers ready to make envelopes. Okay, back up. Gosh, 900 miles an hour. So this is me, right? 900 miles an hour. <laughs> I um, started the, okay, I did the book text journals where I, you know, covered um, book text with sheer, sheer fabric and did my stitching and things all over that. And I've still got those to go and I'm going to make those into flow journals so that I can move them out of here and into my Etsy shop. And so I'm trying to use up scrapbook paper and anything that is copyrighted by somebody else. I'm trying to use them up and get them out in the flow journal so that then I can just work on, on papers that I make myself. So I had a whole bunch of the small scrapbook paper and I thought, let's make envelopes. You know, so first step, of course, is just getting them cut. I was like, if I just get them all cut and folded, that's a huge thing. Then I can do another video where we'll decorate them and do some things. Yeah, there's a lot of really neat papers here. Shelly, I mean, I've, these are, I've probably had these for 10 years. Some of these, um, these papers were really fun. And I just, and then a friend gave me some bigger ones, which I think I've mostly cut down to do some uh, notebooks. Okay, I'm still going to have to adjust these lights a little bit. I'm so short, I'm sitting low and I'm right in the line with these lights. So I need two and three eighths. I always struggle when I come back to this. And then I start going too fast, which is not a good thing either, because then I go back to make the envelopes and they, they don't line up. But my, I've been working on digi kits. I have not done a video yet of them, but in my community tab, there are a few pictures. But I did, um, I did a mermaid kit. And then I had so much fun and I had so many papers that I had to do a second kit. 
And it's more than just like an add on. There's actually enough where you can do two completely different mermaid kits. And so those are posted over in my shop now. See, I do this. I get slightly out of alignment. I get going too quick, too fast. Uh, so that was, it was a lot of fun. It was something of one of the gals on my design team, thank you, Dee, asked for one that wasn't all beautiful women and cutesy. Not, not beautiful women were fine, but she didn't want cutesy, which a lot of the uh, kits that she was finding just didn't quite suit what she wanted. So she helped me brainstorm behind the scenes. And I just, I had a lot of fun. I did some things that I had never done before with digital art. And I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm real excited to see somebody create with it to see, you know, what they come up with. And if they like it as much as I did, uh, it just, I had a lot of fun making it. I've got one more kit to put together with it and then the mermaids will be done. And so I'm, I'm starting to explore how I can use, I, I was a photographer for a while, uh, mostly, you know, because I wanted to learn how to identify the beautiful birds in my yard and so I'm starting to explore how I can I'm doing these backwards how I can use the photos in my kits I should be doing these on the upside down right because how come nobody yelled at me hi Carrie welcome happy to have you here hope you're having a great day Shelly the, the digitals are so much fun and you know any of you that have been watching me for a while know that I was kind of, you know, I'll admit it, I was kind of snobby. I did not in the beginning, when I first started making journals, I said, nope, I am not using any kits. I'm not using any kits. And then I started seeing what people were creating. And I started thinking about what I had in my own stuff and thought, you know, I should be, I should be making some of these kits. I should do this. And so I apologize for all the videos where I said kind of, you know, righteously, oh, no, 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 I don't use any kits. That was wrong of me to do that. And there's, you know, it's, there's an argument that goes around every so often, you know, oh, if you're using a kit, it's not completely original. But, you know, I could give all the gals on my design team the same exact kit and they could have the same exact papers and they're all going to come up with something com completely different and then when I make the kit which I'm finally going to get around to doing is making something with all the stuff all my own digitals um, it's going to be something completely different from them as well thanks Shelly yeah I, I just shared that again in Tracy's group I haven't shared that that playlist of public domain where to find your images anywhere else yeah that's what I should have been doing if those of you haven't seen it, there is a playlist on my channel. There's seven videos in it at the moment that talk about where you can find public domain images to use in your art. And I need to add some more places. I have a list of more places to add. I just, I, I you know, I've, I've been heads down in January, kind of working on the digitals, but also sort of outlining some goals for my business and how I wanted to grow in the coming year, what I wanted to do. Okay, so am I right? Okay, yeah, that's still gonna work okay. I can cut it down. I figure if I, I get all these done, chatting, get myself going again, I have a gazillion comments to answer too. If you've left me a comment, I am embarrassed. I am sorry that I have not gotten back over there to answer the comments yet. I do get to them all. It's just sometimes it takes me a while and I need to develop a better habit around that. But I'm excited about 2020. I've got ideas for uh, journals that are different from things you guys have seen from me before. I'll be adding physical items to my shop at last. I, uh, I have a mindset I think that's a little bit different now. I Last year was about trying to figure out who I was with YouTube and art and videos. And I feel a little bit more confident. Hey, Joey. Hey, Ann. Ann, you want to come scrub my floors next? I don't scrub floors. I have a big dog. I am doing something very boring to watch. I'm sorry, so we're going to have to be exciting in the chat, but this has to be done. And if I have to do something boring like this, I want company. 
Uh, it'll be a lot more fun. I'll come back in a day or so. Dep maybe I'll come back tomorrow. I don't know. It depends on my husband went into the office today, so I knew I was going to have a little bit of quiet. He's not going to be there all day, but it's just easier. Not that he, I mean, he's great if he's home and I just tell him and he stays in his office, but it's just nice to do it when I'm here by myself. So I'll come back and decorate them. <laughs> okay, I, I take it Anne is not going to come help me scrub my floors. I'm excited though. Okay, like I said, we had this huge dog. She's a German Shepherd. You guys may have heard her in, on videos. She barks like crazy when somebody goes by. And, you know, the other name for German Shepherd dogs is German Shedding Dogs because they just shed all season long. So we have had for about a year or so, we have had a uh, robot vac in our bedroom. And so it covers the master bedroom and the bathroom and the dog sleeps in our room with us. So, of course, there's dog hair in there all the time. And it, you know, has its little remote control thing that we can set it off whenever we want to and it does its thing but that's on one step up from the rest of the house so we can't you know easily go the rest of the house so for Christmas one of the things my husband and I got ourselves was a second back and this one is um, is a different brand and it's got an invisible wall so it can do my studio the entry hall the hall bathroom and my husband's office and whoops and then we put this little invisible wall up when we, you know, for most of the time to keep it out of the, the main living room, which is where I am right now, because all the papers and threads and things that go from my desk and, oops, let me empty this thing out, evidently. And so it, um, it actually has an app on my husband's phone that we can run that on. And when we want it to come into the living room, we can make sure we pick up all the dog toys and things and it can come in there. Score papers that hang over the junk jamming. Yeah, doing anything at all that you enjoy. That's that's the key, Joey. And I think you're really good at that. You, I don't know, you find joy at every time you sit down at your, your craft desk. You are finding joy and bringing joy to people that are watching you. You inspire a lot of, lot of people to do stuff. I just need to, what I was saying to the people that just got here, I just got out of the habit of doing videos and I got nervous all over again. Shelly, what do you mean papers that hang over the edge? Papers that hang, oh, like if you're doing a really big paper like this. Hmm, okay, here was a larger one. I guess each time I've turned it though, it's still, so this part hangs over the edge here but my score line was all the way here and this paper is let's see this one is eight and a quarter inches wide so let's see if we went bigger if we went to an 11 by 11 I don't have anything that big I cut down all my huge scrapbook paper um, I would probably I would probably just take a ruler, you know, and if I knew that this was where my spot was and my paper kept coming off the edge here, let me come up a little farther here. I would probably just take my ruler and put it right in there where that corner rounder is. And I would come with a pencil and mark it as far as I could on here. And then I take it over to my, either my scoreboard or my paper trimmer, something that's got a little ledge so that I can score into it. I don't know if that would help. Indoor cats. Yeah. When I had a cat, you know, I, I'm not a cat person by, by nature. That's just not my thing, but I did have the best cat in the whole world. All right. Let's see. I, I messed myself up here. Okay. I did this one here and now I'm going to go back over to this there. I had the best cat in the world about 20 years ago and just one cat, the hair, because of course cats can climb places that most dogs can't. We always kid that, you know, after we finish brushing Zoe, ah, I messed this one up. I have to be creative with, um, that there's always enough left over for another dog. Let 
Yeah, and that's I think that's a good idea. Just use a, a ruler to score the rest. Let me just get an idea. Okay, maybe I didn't mess it up as bad as I thought. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so if I'm putting these in the flow journals, okay, so I have a bunch of these, and I'll match them up kind of to the scrapbook papers that are in the book. So if I have these, and they're going in a flow journal, and the idea is that you can tear apart the journals and use the papers and the things in them however you want, would you want the envelopes decorated somehow? Would you want them already inked at the spots? Or would you want them just completely flat like this that you can do whatever you want with? How would you want to see them in, in a flowish journal? Because that's, that's next. And I'll bring all those papers in there. I'm so sick of cutting papers. Oh my goodness. And after I had gone through all that with all my scrapbook papers and cut them down to the size to fit in the journals, it dawned on me that I could have just taken them to the local print shop and uh, they would have cut them for me at a much reasonable price and, and much, much time saving. Whoops. But I forgot to do that. I will be doing that later, though. With I've got an order for from a nonprofit for a couple of you know huge batches of journals again this year so I will be letting the print shop do a lot of cutting for me plain maybe inked flat plain envelopes not decorate yeah okay so maybe what I'll do is I'll just pick a few to decorate just for the heck of it and some of them I might ink things that look like they're going to need a little bit of something else maybe I can do one of each do flat plane and then uh, and one that's folded and decorated. I mean, is this? I'm guessing this would be a help in a flow journal, right? Is that they're all cut like this, and all you have to do is then fold them, do your own thing with them. Hopefully, I'm not doing all of this for nothing. Let's see. I guess it doesn't matter which way I'm doing this. The paper, the in the book, there's going to be a lot of. A lot of my scrapbook papers, like I said, I'm, I'm de-stashing all the scrapbook paper. There will be, um, I think there's journal papers. There are uh, some dyed papers. There is uh, wrapping paper. I had some really neat looking wrapping paper. So I don't know, I think there's going to be, be a nice variety. And then I'm thinking I might put some fabric in there. I'll cut it like the size of the pages. So it'll slide right in because I'm not going to permanently bind them. I'll just do a ribbon binding. So then you'll have something else you can use. And then I got at Goodwill this enormous, enormous bolt of burlap. I mean, <laughs> it's huge. It's taking up the entire top shelf in my fabric closet right now. So I was thinking I would cut pieces of that and add that to the journals and Uh, Shelly, how is a flow journal different? So the flow journal is designed um, after a magazine called Flow Magazine. And the magazine prints beautiful papers and ephemera that you can then cut apart and use in your various art projects. Um, however, it's usually not stuff that you can you know, take apart and scan and resell. And so a junk journal is usually something that's more permanently bound, you know, ready for you to go to work in or as a memory book or something. A flow journal or a flowish journal, which is to copy, I think Rosemary Morris first started using that, is a journal that you can take apart in pieces and then use. So maybe it'll have, um, I might have pages of scrapbook paper and ledger paper, and it's not attached. So you can take it out and make a collage with it. You can take the ledger paper out and cut it apart for tags. You can uh, make an envelope out of it. Yeah, and you can use this as a template. So I'm not going to fold any more of those. Thanks for saving me that kind of time. That's awesome. So the idea is just flow. Let, let the art flow from the stuff that's in the journal and you know you could leave the whole thing together I my giveaway journal 
if you go back, I have a video um, on the giveaway journal and it flips through all the pages and shows you how you can take everything out. It's just bound with a ribbon so the pages slide in and out. And some people like that just as the regular journal to work on because you can take out a signature, work on it, and then slide it back in again. And you could do that. And then when you're done, you could um, sew it together. But maybe in one of the flowish journals, you get five pages that would look great in a boho journal that you're doing. And the rest of them look, would look great in a vintage journal you're working on. So you can take the papers out and use them in different projects. It's kind of, I guess, another word for it would just be a kit that's in journal form. You know, so you're going to have a cover. But what I'm going to do is, let's see, I think they're close enough. I can reach them. So here is the beginning of them. Wait a minute. Let me finish this one while it's here. I've got one more cut to do. So here is the beginnings of the flow journal. So we've got a journal. Actually, let's grab one of the full size ones. So you'll have a journal cover like this. And this is the only thing that's permanent. OK, you've got the pockets and the tie. That's permanent. And then everything that goes inside here, you're going to be able to take apart. So I've got these. You're going to have a. A tassel that's on it but of course you'll be able to take that apart um, so these are the ones that I'm going to fill up as my my book text journals and I can't wait honestly I cannot wait to start working in these and then I want to make some more of these because they were so much fun to do Where's the, more of the bigger ones this is still I think my favorite this material is so so yummy Anyway, so that's the plan because that's letting me use up book pages. I'm using up some fabric. I'm using up papers that, you know, either are ones that I won't use that much of or I have so many. You know, we, we go to a thrift store and we buy, um, we buy an old journal and it's got 150 pages in it, you know, an old ledger. And it's got 150 pages in it, which is awesome, except... You know, it's going to take a while to use all those pages. So this way I can I can go through them and share some of my wealth and, and you guys can do something creative with them. And then I've got to tackle the books too. I've got, you know, if you've watched, I've got four videos showing all the different books I look for in stores. Well, if you realize how many books I have, nature books and vintage dictionaries and all these old things, um, vintage animals, uh, catalogs, clothing, you know, there's way too, oh, and children's books. I love children's school books. I have so many of those. So I'm going to start pulling some of those apart and adding those to this as well. And I am so glad you like your cover. It was so fun to have some, I mean, it's fun when anybody wins, but it was really interesting to have somebody that I knew from online win. Wow, is this like watching paint dry, people? So what are y'all working on? Anne was cleaning her floors, but she must have a craft, craft project someplace around. Joey's jamming, doing whatever makes her happy, which I just love. Hey, Penny. Hello, hello. Happy to see you here. Gosh, I think the last time I did a live is when we first met Penny, and Penny is now on my design team, and that is super exciting to me. If you have not seen any of Penny's videos, you need to click on her name and go to her channel and go subscribe to her channel and see her beautiful, beautiful storytelling videos. I mean, there is a story in every journal that she creates, and she does this wonderful history um, I love her Wild West one. If you're a Wild West fan, if you're looking for some ideas on how to do, you know, a masculine type journal, that would be a possibility. She's got some great ideas. Oh, Shelly, you're at work and yet you're able to watch a little bit. That's nice.
isn't the little envelope maker like one of the best inventions ever? I mean, sure, we can do it the other way and we can make a template or we can take an envelope apart, but man, this makes things easy. I've got the mini one too, which I really like because I like all things that are small. Wow, so you guys just saved me a ton of work. I'm not going to fold them. I'm not going to ink them. I'm not going to decorate them. The ones that I have that are already folded, I'll decorate and save for some other project. But, uh, yeah, I really struggled today. I was like, okay, I want to do a video, and I have no idea what to do a video about. So let me know. I didn't want to – I was going to collage after I saw Tracy's collage video this morning, and I thought, well, I shouldn't do that right away after. I don't need to copy her but I'm going to do a collage video. Uh, let me know, please. What, what kind of videos do you think I should do? What would you like to see more of? What do you not see enough of? Ribbon embroidery, Anne. Oh, wow. I can't wait to see some pictures of that. Our book group, I think, is going to read... The book, The Broiders, if you guys have, have heard of that, about women that um, embroidered the kneelers, I guess, in the church after World War I. I'm looking forward to that. 6.30 a.m. and you're up. Oh, is that a natural thing for you, Penny, or is it because you have so many animals? The only 6.30 I ever see is p.m., I've been working really hard to kind of get myself on a on a regular time, trying to help myself sleep better. So I thought if I get a routine and then also not sleeping too late in the morning, because, you know, what's the point of being retired if you can't sleep when you want to? So I, uh, I tend to turn off everything at 11 p.m. and I go into the bedroom and then I read from 11 to 1 a.m. And then I tend to sleep until 7.30 or 8 a.m. 7.30 is probably about the earliest I get up unless the dog is going crazy. I cannot wait to see that full spirit animal journal book, Penny. I am super excited. It's, it's still kind of freaky weird, but in a good way to see people creating with my kits. It's just with my papers. It's like, whoa, really? <laughs> New Orleans journal, Carrie. Ooh, are you from New Orleans or are you just Orleans? I can't say it that way anymore. I used to be able to get the accent right. I lived there for three years. And, oh, your mother-in-law did one? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's by the same gal that wrote um, The Girl with the Pearl Earring. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading it. Liz, you're up at five. Oh gosh, I'm old. I'm old. I can't do that anymore. I when I still worked in tech, I was up at five because I would work ten hour days so that I could have um, a four day work week. And I was a lot younger then. Now it's like nope. I just I. My time clock has never been an early morning time clock. I have always been a night owl. Hey, text Judy. Happy to have you here. What are you working on today, if anything? I'm doing, you know, paint drying kind of stuff, just cutting envelopes. But I wanted to chat with friends while I was doing this. Well, Liz, I'm jealous of your productivity because yeah you do seem to always get a lot done and I just seem to be going slower and slower but I uh, I probably need to make some adjustments in my lifestyle <laughs> that might give me a little bit more energy when I went off sugar and carbs a few years ago it really helped my focus and my energy so it's probably time to do that again but this getting old thing it's not for sissies I wish that I was arting when I was younger and, and had a little bit more energy, but oh well. 60 is the new, what, 40? Is that what it is? <laughs> I'll be 62 this year. 
<laughs> I just realized, you know, Facebook throws up memories for us so we can, you know, look back and see what we were doing. And yesterday it told me that 10 years ago I uh, is when I added art to my life and I took my first art class. I was still writing full time, but I took an art class to help me, a collage class to kind of help me deal with writer's block. And then eventually the art took over from the writing and I stepped back from writing full time and went to art full time. But it just 10 years ago, I took my first class. That just still kind of blows my mind. Uh, Judy, yeah. Before we moved here four years, five years ago, four years ago, we had a huge house and we went to a much smaller house and we did a lot of downsizing, but I did not downsize art supplies because at that time I hadn't been arting long enough to really feel what direction I was going. Now, now I find it easier to go through and clean stuff out and donate it someplace else or sell it if it's worth selling. If I go to bed early, Liz, I can never fall asleep. I mean, falling asleep is always an issue for me. I think it was just so many years of writing. My brain tells stories in my head while I'm trying to sleep and or fall asleep. And it just it makes it really hard. Oh, you're from Baton Rouge. I lived in Algiers for three years. And I used to work for Schlumberger when I lived there. It was uh, It was interesting times. And then Schlumberger turns out that they had an office completely unrelated to oil back here in California, which is where I'm from, and I was able to come back home again. Oh, Shelly, I have an indulgent husband, and I've taken over every room of the house. We've been remodeling this house for the last four years. And my studio got done about a year ago. And so I've got, you know, one room for that. But right now I'm in the living room because at our old house was huge. And so I had room for really big furniture. And my, my writer's office had these two huge desks in it. And I had them back to back. Well, those desks are in the living room now. And so I, I art in here because I've got full lighting. And then in the studio, I've got my big island for working on and then when I do my paper dyeing I'm in the kitchen area taking over the dining area I've taken over the back deck so the hall closet that was supposed to be for house stuff is filled with fabric but it's just the two of us here people don't really come to see us you know a few local friends but <clears throat> we don't have a guest room we've never had a guest room on purpose and uh, the house is just, it's just us. At this age, why not do the things that bring you joy, right? When we were cl clearing out our house to move to downsize from a big one to a small one, and we knew we were going to have to put stuff in storage because we didn't have a new house to move to, um, I found that the most helpful thing in the world was the KonMari method of putting all like things together. You know, once I collected all the vases from all over the house and realized how many vases I had or candlesticks or things like that, it was just, it was, uh, it was kind of eye opening. And so now I've been doing the same thing with my craft supplies and realizing, you know, if you saw my recent crap, my video on glue, I had so much glue and somebody mentioned a glue that I didn't show in the video. And I realized I do have that glue, which means somewhere in the garage, there's another box of art supplies that I missed bringing in the house somewhere. So I'm going to have to go dig that out. And after the flow journals get put together and posted, then I'll start going through the fabric because I will not live enough live long enough to use up all the fabric I have. Yeah, Carrie, it was very interesting. I would say 
the, uh, I don't know, three years was about two years too long. The first year was really interesting because it was so different, but I, I didn't fit there. I got there via the military man that I was at that time married to for a brief time. And <clears throat> I was, I was happy to move on. The first job I had there, somebody stole my purse, my keys. We had to have the entire apartment re redone, all the locks redone and stuff. And sort of went down from there. But I worked with good people. It was a great company to work for. And I worked with wonderful people. And they gave me the opportunity to come back to California. So that was, that was worth it right there. Uh, I must have a pile of stuff under there. Yep. So what videos help me with ideas? Dang it. What kind of videos do you guys want to see? I had to get back to work making stuff. You're moving to your daughter's basement, which is bigger than the cabin you live in now. Oh, wow. Are you in Texas, Judy, or someplace else? Oh, I had two at once. That does create a problem, doesn't it? Let's see here. So I think upcoming videos planned. I will decorate some envelopes. I need to do some more ephemera videos for the um, the Make Ahead ephemera playlist that I have. But you know what happens is you you get an idea and you don't act on it right away. And then the next time you go over onto YouTube, you see five more people have done the same thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, I should do something different and then come back to that. And so then you sit down and start thinking about ideas again. And boy, I can procrastinate with the best of them. I am so good at that. And then sometime in the next two weeks, I need to sit down and work on the taxes because I've got a tax appointment early February. I like to get it all done early. So then it's out of my hair and I don't have to think about it for the rest of the year. Oh, you're going from Texas to Iowa? Yikes. Yikes. That's a big change. Yeah, I'm California born and bred. I was only out of California for probably about four years. I went from California to Virginia and then from Virginia to Louisiana and then back home to California. Yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about New Orleans. Um, I said I lived in Algiers, and that was close enough to New Orleans. But, I mean, I would come home, and there would be the crime tape because there had been yet another killing outside the apartment complex, and we supposedly lived in a decent area. But I uh, there was good food and good music. The best part of the whole thing, though, really was the, the people I worked with at Schlumberger. They were awesome. I couldn't stand the, you know, I'm not a party person and I'm not a, a big crowd person. I'm more the stay at home and like my peace and quiet and my nature spot here. I keep making these and the stack is not going down. I swear there's still a lot of paper. Wow. I have a feeling there's going to be more than just one of these that lands in each flow journal. They're going to be just single signatures. The idea is to make them full, but, you know, reasonably priced enough that people aren't going to freak out. You know, I just want to make them full of all kinds of goodies and, And then I want to get back to making more of these covers because I really like making these book page covers. Okay. 
<clears throat> Ooh, kind of hard to see the line there. Let's see. So more, more of what kind of videos? Ephemera videos? Journal videos? I stunk at um, doing in a timely manner, making the, the journal from start to finish for the giveaway journal, but maybe I could try that again and not put a time limit on myself and just post the whole thing when it was done. So we'll have to think about another video since we're coming up on 3,000 subscribers. Oh, Jeanette, why are you intimidated? Um, let's see. Let's talk about an envelope punch board. I should say, shouldn't say why are you intimidated because it's a new thing. And I remember when I first got mine, everybody, you know, I was watching people that were like zipping through it like I am right now and thinking, wow, how do I do this? Um, the biggest thing is to make sure your paper is square. You know, if you're cutting your paper down, you need to have square paper and it's going to tell you, you know, in your little thing here, you know, what paper size it needs to be. Um, I made a mistake when I first got mine is that I had paper that it said it was like six inches. Like this was like a six inch paper pad, except it really wasn't. It's actually five and a half inches. So once you know, you know, you measure and you know how square your fabric is or your fabric, your paper is. So for five and a half inches square, there's only one option. But for some of them, like if you have a six by six, I don't know if you can, let's see if I hold this up there, if you can see it any better. Uh, doesn't want to really focus. But for six by six, you can make, each square makes a different size. On the six by six, you can make a three by four envelope or you can make a three and a half by three and a half envelope. So different size papers, you might be able to get multiple size envelopes out of them. Then, so this is five and a quarter or five and a half. So I know that I'm going to get an envelope that's two and a half by three and a half. And I know that my score line is two and three eighths. So that is when it says the score line, that's what you're going to use this thing up here for. So you've got your square. I'm looking for two and three eighths. So I'm right here at two and three eighths. I'm going to take my score and I'm just going to come up here. And then I tend to punch at the same time. Then you take that score line and you're going to come right back in here. And this little, this little wedge that's coming off of the corner punch, that's what you line back up on that score line. And then you're going to score again and punch. And when you do that, that's what gives you your little corner here. So now you're going to line that. So each time you just turn the paper the same way, line up your score line. punch and turn the page and line up your score line and punch. Now, depending on the paper you use, sometimes when you fold it in, depending on the square you start with, you're going to have this tip is going to go. So here's my next fold. So see, it's kind of close. So you can just fold this under which is kind of what I do is I fold it under and then tape it or uh, glue it, or you can just cut it off. And the same thing when you're coming down, this one's going to be just fine, but, but you might want a different look. You might want to just cut it across. So it's just basically square, figure out the size of your paper. Let's do another one. The size of your paper, five and a half. That tells me I can go to a score line at two and three eighths going to come back over here. I'm going to score it. Be careful if you have super thin paper, you will rip right through the paper, but then I just do something with washi tape. And then, okay, so I, I'm sorry, I go fast. You score it and then you just turn it and line up that score line again. Score it, turn it, line up with the wedge. Turn it, and there you go. Oh, 
Oh, I have the mini one too. Um, Okay, wait a minute. Let me, I mixed. I missed some chat. I'm backing up here a little bit. Ah, uh, start to finish. I do have one of those. If you watch the giveaway, it's like a series with the giveaway journal, Judy, that you can see a journal being put together the whole way. But uh, I think I might do another one that's new like that. If I'm making, yep. I think I need to do some more of that. And I agree with um, what Liz said. Try and contact the manufacturer and see if you can get them to replace that because these are pretty pretty durable although i found that i i had to dink more with my mini one as well i don't have any squares cut to the right size on that to use right now well shelly you never know if you don't ask i mean you know maybe they'll say no but you know give it a shot i'm so lucky i don't have a tuesday morning around here I don't have any craft stores in town. There's one in the nearby town, but it's not a very good one. And that's that's a good thing for me. I am, at, again, if you saw my glue video, I am such a sucker when it comes to impulse buys. I fall for it every time. Okay, and sometimes you'll have stuff that doesn't line up exactly. And you know what? I just go ahead and score it anyways. You can kind of manipulate the paper once you're done. The more you do any of this stuff, the more you realize it's not worth stressing over. You know, this isn't brain surgery. It's paper. And the worst thing that happens, like, um, this was one. Ah, worst thing that happens. This was a template I was playing with myself on a digital. And I didn't have the template lined up right. So you can see none of this looks right. There's, there's spaces. You know, there it doesn't look right. Well, you know what? You could cover it with something or you can just, this is one of the papers that's in my mermaid kit. You know, it's just paper. I admit, in my 20s, 30s, maybe even in my 40s, I would have like super stressed and cried. But now I've got some neat paper that I can use in collage. And I could even, you know, collage onto some of this stuff here. So it's just paper. Don't, don't stress. You know, there are so many things in life worth stressing about um, or that we have no choice in stressing about, you know, health and financial issues and loved ones going through difficult times. Don't bring extra stress on yourself when you come to art. Arting is is hopefully a stress release, at least it is for me. Now I admit when things are really, really bad, if, if I'm worrying, you know, with my in my case, it's usually worrying about my kids. So if I'm worrying about them, it's hard to do anything. But I have to force myself to either go outside and you know do something with the dog, do something in the yard get over here to the art desk and do something because otherwise if you just sit and wallow in it then you just feel yourself falling into this pit of despair that is hard to get out of using up a paper pad using up your stash ideas i like that yeah this is definitely using up paper pads i will not have any more uh six inch paper pad pieces left I cleaned out, I would say, probably 80% of my 12 by 12s in cutting them down to pages to fit in my journals. I kept aside some of the really pretty ones to use in some journals I want to make. Create a digital collage. Oh, <laughs> well, that would be, um, you know, maybe I'll have to think on that. What program are you using to create your collages? And you know, that's the problem is that everybody is working in a different program. <coughs> and everybody's at a different level of talent with their programs. And I uh, I am all self-taught with my digital art stuff, so I don't know that I'm the best person to be showing people, but it does depend on what program you're using. 
Um, if you're using Photoshop Elements, I can't help you. I use a program called Paint.net, which is open source. I like to support open source programs whenever possible. Um, I am not a Photoshop person. You know, it's, it's funny because sometimes you just, there's certain programs where, and I'm a techie person. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with tech, but there are certain programs that just, my brain freezes. And Photoshop is one of those that I just, you know, I use Adobe Lightroom and I do a lot of my edits in Adobe Lightroom and I use Lightroom for organizing all my um, thousands and thousands of photographs and then images. But when it comes to Photoshop, I'm just, I don't know. I guess it's what you get used to as well. I picky. Yeah, um, I do know some people that use I picky. I'll take a look at it and see if there's something basic I can do, you know, for people using like one of the free per, I mean, paint.net is free, but it is, there's a very steep learning curve. You know, and there's the biggest thing on digitals is you make, you need to make sure that you are using, of course, copyright free images. And you have to make sure that you're giving the, uh, the people a quality high high resolution image that they can download for printing. And so you, you can't, you know, grab a small image off the web and then expand it and ex enlarge it and expect it to print nicely. And then there's a lot of nuances that go into it. So I, I haven't looked at iPicky at all. I know people that use it, but I haven't looked at it. No, Photoshop ain't easy. And I mean, I can use it. I can work my way around in it. But in paint.net, I can do everything. You know, I can do my layers. I can do all my adjustments. I can do my distortions. I can do my color changes. I can do my remove backgrounds. So I can do everything in paint.net. And and it's not resident. It's resident on my computer. So, I, you know, I don't need to deal with an Internet connection. And I don't need to I don't need to deal with Adobe. Like I said, I, I really like open source stuff. But if you're brand new and you're going to learn something, you know, if I had never done anything tech-wise before and I was brand new, I would probably, you know, go to Adobe because it's the most well-known. There are the most tutorials and things out there. But I, um, I've always supported the underdog, I guess. And like I said, there's so far I haven't ran into anything I can't do. There are some brushes that Photoshop has. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll take something and I'll take it over to um, another program like PhotoP or something and play with some brushes. But for the most part, the amount of time I spend dinking with it there, I'd rather just go back and change my design a little bit in paint.net and work on it that way. I love Paint Shop Pro. That was my go-to for years and years and years. Oh my gosh, I loved it. And when I got my latest computer last year with Windows 10 64-bit, Paint Shop Pro did not want to run on it. It did not, for some reason, it just did not work well at all. I, I just had a lot of hassles with it, and I finally had to let it go. And now it turned out to be a good thing. Um, because I, I can do a little bit more with paint.net. and But uh, I have a hard time with change, changing computers, changing programs that I've used for years. I mean, when I was writing, I used uh, WordPerfect. Long after Microsoft Word was becoming the go-to, I still used WordPerfect. And, of course, the publishing industry, we were all using WordPerfect. It was very hard to switch over after that. But PaintShop Pro, man, I love that program. Judy, that's what I did for a while. I was going to my old computer, because I still have it, and I was doing things on that one and then putting it on a thumb drive and taking it to the new computer. GIMP is supposed to be very good and powerful. I haven't, um, I didn't like the instructions on it as well as I liked paint.net, which is the strangest name for a program. I think it's a horrible name for a program, but I like it personally better than GIMP just for me. So you might want to check it out. 
Oh, thank you, Penny. There are so many choices out there for images. I've got like another whole set of places that I want to take you guys to. I was looking at them this morning while I was, um, I tend to go looking for images when I'm drinking my morning tea. And then I fall down the rabbit hole and I look up and it's been like four hours that I've been looking at images and I need to get to work, which is why I just said, okay, I'm going to dive in and do something really boring, like make envelopes and chat. So at least I get something going here. I think my, my little cutter there is getting tired. I guess these things, we can't get them sharpened anywhere. Hey, Lori. Haven't seen you for ages. You have hippies there. We have hippies here. I live just outside of Santa Cruz, California. So we are hippie central. So Lori, are you still vacationing in your warm place or are you back home again? Or weren't you going off to Mexico, I think? Or am I misremembering? Maybe what I should do is a series on paint.net. We'll see. I have to do so much scanning. I have so many papers I need to scan before I can use them. And I, <laughs> I made the mistake of mixing up my stacks and, oh, trying to go back through scanned images against physical images and see whether or not I had scanned the various eco prints or distress spray papers or leaf impressions and things. I finally just said, screw it and tossed them all into a pile assuming that I had used them and I'll have to make some more, but I still have a huge stack of about 200 papers to scan and see if I want to use. And that takes so long. I hate scanning more than anything else. I think. And it's not cheap to hire somebody to do that part for you. Hey, Lorna. Hi, hi, hi. Haven't seen you either for a long time. You have been busy making journals, Lorna. Beautiful. Oh, guys, if you want to see some beautiful journals, you need to go look at um, Taylor Made Journals Etsy shop. Wow, she's got some pretty ones in there right now. She does the most beautiful vintage ones. Penny, are you trying to use paint.net? It is um, the, the link for that program is getpaint.net. Getpaintnet.com. I don't know. I would Google paint.net and see because for some reason the first link takes you to something that has nothing to do with the program, but. I'll try and remember to put a link down in the comments below or in the description below where to find it. Uh, it is completely free. It is open source. They do maintain it. They do update the program regularly. And there is a bit of a learning curve to get started, but uh, I really like it. Lorna, I know it's the, the, I was saying before, you know, I got started here, when I first got started here is that I have just not been able to get myself over to the video and doing something simple like these envelopes was like, that was all I could manage. I swear if I could find something pretty to do while I was scanning and chatting with you guys, I would do that. But that would be even more boring than this is. Scanning is just the pits. If I had young kids still around, I tell you, I would put them to work doing that but then it's picky you know because then if you you know there's stuff that I adjust when I'm doing the scanning that I couldn't expect anybody else to to look at even when my husband will look at something right after I've scanned it and I'll ask him if he sees what I see he doesn't so yeah maybe I'm still a perfectionist trying to recover but yeah Lorna those journals you just posted wow mind blown they are they're intense and beautiful and kind of motivated me to 
get some stuff cleaned out so I can get back to working. What I have to do that I won't video probably the process of, but I just, I, in order to get them off my island in the studio is I have the landscapes, the fabric landscapes that I've been doing. I have like 15 of them laid out there and I need to get them stitched down. But I didn't want to bring them into the living room to sew while the contractor and the electricians and things were here working on the sunroom because then you know, I end up with dust all over everything. So I've got to do those next. And uh, then my island will be free because I need the island. When I'm laying out journals, I need to be able to spread it out all over the island. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having an assistant too, except I have control issues, Lorna. <laughs> I mean, really, anybody, do you think you could turn over any part of what you're working on to somebody else? I'm. Um, what I would like to do, because I want to start doing a lot of physical products for sale, is I would like to turn the shipping over to somebody else. I hate shipping with a passion. I think I stink at, you know, getting all the stuff together. It takes me, I don't stink at it. It's just, it takes me so long. And I always think I have the right size box or envelopes and I don't. So I'm trying to like plan out, like I, I figured out what padded envelopes I wanted for these journals, these flow journals and trying to get all that stuff set up before I actually have them ready to, to ship. But Oh, well, Lorna, I mean, when you make good stuff, I love being able to share, you know, with other people who's making good things because it's so motivating to me to see other beautiful pieces that are being made. And, you know, just uh, we've had this discussion before. Hoarding our knowledge doesn't change anything. So when I look at one of your journals and if I see something, you know, unique about it that I can't figure out how to make, I know I can, you know, drop you a note and ask you to, you know, hey, can you do a video on how you did such and such or, you know, share with us how you did this. You know, you're a knowledge sharer and that's just, it's powerful. Um, people that hoard knowledge, I, I'm not quite sure what they're worried about, but in some cases, you know, creating digitals, that's a touchy subject for a lot of people. And, you know, it's one that I have to think about too. It's like, well, how much do you share on how to use a program? And yet, you know, if it's one of the things that you're growing your own business with, you know, you, you don't want to give away, you don't build up your other, your competition. And yet I could give 10 people the same 10 elements and say, create something with it. And, you know, digitally, and again, they're going to come up with 10 different things. So I, the, the knowledge hoarding doesn't make any sense there either. When you support somebody else in their efforts to create, to share, to teach, it makes you stronger. It makes them stronger. It makes the people around them stronger because you realize that there's no threat. You know, if I tell you how I do something, it shouldn't be a threat to me. It should encourage you to go out and create and motivate somebody else, and it won't be a threat to you. I don't know. Yeah, you're right, Lorna. I'm sorry I forgot about that. But you do answer questions, and that's just awesome. Um, it's frustrating, and especially because, you know, there's a lot of people that watch things that they never come back and make a comment or, you know, like on a live, maybe they don't make a comment, but they'll go back and watch a video and they'll ask a question. And I know it's hard to answer all the questions on the videos and answer all the comments and that I'm way behind. I'm a week behind on answering mine. And in fact, I have a haul video I was going to post and I haven't yet because I feel like I can't post it until I answer all the comments that I have unanswered yet. But when, you know, and a lot of times the people are just giving you compliments. It's like you go through and you can at least give a like. But if people are asking you a specific question, you know, on a video that you've posted, I just think it's polite to go back and, and answer the question. And, you know, if you get 10,000 comments a day, I know you're scanning them and you're going to see the questions. I don't know. It's a pet peeve of mine, and maybe someday I will be 
you know, so famous and have so many comments coming that I never get caught up because I do see that happen with people. Um, I don't know. It's the writer in me. It's words. It's the writer that wants to respond. Judy, that's it. It's, you know, you watch somebody else's video and, you know, like this morning I watched uh, Tracy Fox's video on, she just did a very simple paper collage and, you know, simple stuff is really important to, to remember because we over, or I at least am an expert at overcomplicating my life. Um, I do that. I did that the last few digital things I was working on. I did that with the last, um, custom order journal that I did. I made it much harder on myself than I needed to because I made it super complicated. And so I was watching, you know, Tracy's video and my idea of a collage video would be completely different from hers, but I was motivated both to collage and just, just some different ways of thinking of things like what she got out of three sheets of paper um, that she had collaged was inspiring. And Sometimes, I, you know, I watch a lot of videos with the sound off because, uh, like, if my husband has the TV on and I'm not really interested in whatever he's watching, I'll watch the video with the sound off and I'll have the closed captions on. And then my fingers start itching. I want to go create something, so I'm making notes. And I don't know. I'm uh, Rarely do I not get at least one idea from a video that I watch. It's very rare. Liz, yeah, no, exactly. It takes a. I mean, that's why I said I'm. I'm literally a week behind on answering comments, and I'm not getting. You know, we're not talking about a massive quantities of comments. So, you know, I do know when people are getting. You know, two thousand comments, they can't answer all of them. But sometimes I feel bad when I see a question from somebody that you know says they're just starting out. You know, it, I don't. I don't mean to be accusatory towards people that you know you just don't have the time or you know, you have to choose between making another instructional video or answering comments. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean that to come out that way. It's just my own thing. I'm, I want to, as long as possible, continue to answer all comments and questions. Hey there, do you wanna go by which name? Minxi, Victoria, that I still think of you as Victoria in my brain. Good evening. So happy to see you here. Oh, Jeanette, I don't think you should ever feel bad for commenting. Never, ever, ever. And those of you that, like Liz, that do a lot of videos and get a lot of comments, please weigh in here. Even if we can't comment right away and we don't get back to comment, you guys have no idea how powerful your words are. When you leave... You know, thank you so much for this video. When you leave, oh, I got so inspired watching this. Oh, wow. I never thought about doing this before. When you leave just a short sentence, what I can say for me personally, I get so fired up. Literally, it's like it's like you're plugging into juice bars and suddenly I'm charged up and I want to go to work and I want to create a new video for you. I want to do something else to inspire you. When you post a video and nobody comments, or you get like a thumbs down and you get one comment, thank you, that's it. Then it's like, well, why bother? Why should I come out and make another video? So the comments are the fuel. And I think I'm not alone on this. I think the comments are the fuel for all of us to keep going. And I never, ever, ever consider it a drain or an obligation. You know, we may reach the point where we feel bad that we haven't commented right away. But for me, it is absolutely the juice. Of course, this is coming from my writing background where if I got a rejection letter, I didn't want to go anywhere near the computer and, and write for weeks, <laughs> literally. Um, but if I got a good review on a book that just came out, man, I was motivated. If I got a fan letter from somebody, I could not wait to get back into my office and get to work. Hey, Took. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Haven't, oh, gosh, you guys are making me feel so glad that I came on today. Thank you, thank you. Seeing familiar faces here is really motivating for me as well. 
I'm going to go back up here. Okay, so Victoria, you answered it both. Great. So you're Victoria in my brain. <laughs> oh, spelling, nah. When, you know, as long as the message comes across, spelling doesn't matter. There are too many people with too many different languages or, you know, different strengths. That's not the issue. I just, comments um, really, and, and it's a way, you know, I some some of you have seen my, post that I put out at the beginning of the year, you know, free things that you can do to support your favorite YouTuber or uh, Facebook person or Etsy store. I mean, leave a comment on their videos, leave a like, leave a comment on their Facebook posts, like their Etsy store, favorite an item, uh, leave a review if you buy something from them. It's amazing to me not just my store, but I see so many stores that, you know, they've had, you know, 10,000 sales and they have 500 reviews. It's like, what the heck? How come? Um, they've had 100 sales and they have one review that just uh, if you buy something from somebody and you like it, leave them a review on Etsy. And if you have an issue with it, contact them before leaving a bad review and see if the issue can be resolved. But Facebook likes, sharing videos, sharing posts, all of that stuff is just, um, it's fuel for our imaginations. It makes us feel valued. You know, a lot of people can't afford to go to our Etsy shops and support us financially. So give us your words. Give us your attaboys. Give us your thank yous. Um, it's, it's a good currency for me. Hello, Michelle. Welcome from New Zealand. Happy to have you here, and thank you for the kind words. Ah, oh, Lorna, thank you. You guys, honestly, <laughs> I, I, I am going to when I when I go off of this video here, I am actually going to go get those landscapes and start sewing so I can get to work because you guys are giving me the fuel that I need. Thumbs up. That's another thing. Yes. Leave a thumbs up. That's a little thing to do. And sometimes I'll go back like I have a, a private playlist of my inspiration and I'll go back and say, OK, you know, where was that video that so and so did on such and such? And I'll look at it and realize oh, I hadn't left a thumbs up. So, you know, you can leave it even if you watched the video months ago and you remember, oh, wait, I watched that and I learned something from it. Leave them a thumbs up then. I rarely remember to ask people to leave a thumbs up or, you know, like, subscribe or, you know, all that stuff. But uh, when you see this live, go up later if you liked it, if you had a good time. Or I guess you can leave likes now, too. So if you like this now, you can leave me a thumbs up. Lorna, I do the binge thing, too. I kind of actually, in some ways, I almost prefer to binge watch people because I get a, a feel for their personality and I learn something like they'll say, you know, well, in my last video, I talked about such and such. And if I watched their last video six months ago, I don't remember what they were talking about. But if I binge watch them in order, you know, I can, I don't know, I can kind of get the flow for it. They might, I don't know, I just, I like to binge watch. And yes, Victoria, you can heart their shops, even if you can't afford to buy anything from them. If you heart their shops and make it a favorite shop or heart their items or put something in your cart, even though it's not something you're going to buy, you put something in your cart for a while that maybe somebody else comes over to the shop and looks at it. And they're like, oh, well, you know, five people have this in their cart. I better take a closer look at this. It might be something that I might be interested in. Wow. Wow, Lorna. 80 new French documents. Are you scouring? Are you doing this like online shopping, um, eBaying and stuff? Or are you actually getting out? You don't get out much, do you, to go out to the shops themselves? Once a year, I get to one shop that I really, really love. And I should probably make myself drive down there a little more often. No, not yet. First, <laughs> first we will reduce the stash of stuff that's in the studio. Look at this. I'm almost done. Woohoo! Got these skinny papers left. 
Okay, I will be glad to have these moving into the their new homes in the flow journals. Those of you that came in a little later, I am cutting envelope templates so that I can put them in the flow journals that I am uh, going to be building with building in my book text journals. So I made these covers a while ago, and then I'm going to make flowish journals out of them and then get them in the Etsy shop. That is the plan. And the actual plan is to have a minimum of five of those journals posted in the shop by the end of January. That's my plan. I cannot believe this pile has gone. This is great. And even better is that you guys told me I didn't have to fold them or ink them. So that's awesome. I will just put the... Uh, I'll just tuck them into one of the little pockets that I have in the journals. Whoever gets them can decide what they want to do with them. Yes, it's another TV activity, and I did do a lot of them. Uh, I did my larger ones when I was watching TV. My TV activity should probably be getting caught up on all my comments. That would be a good thing to do. <laughs> Although the last week I have been just heads down working on my mermaid kits. I just, uh, when I'm in a digital mode, I kind of, you know, work on nothing but digitals for a few weeks because it takes a different part of my brain than, than doing the physical stuff. So since the first of the year, that's what I've been doing is working on digital. So there's, there's a few new things in the shop. There's the two mermaid kits. And then there are a lot more lined papers and some bright colors. I have to do a video showing all these things. And then I started a new line called Basic Papers, and they're huge kits of like 35 pages in a variety of colors. And they just have all the basic backgrounds for collaging, for making journal pages, tags, all that kind of stuff. So coming to the end of the digital time, and then I will get back to physical work. The envelope punch board was one of the first things you bought, Victoria. I held off buying this for a while. I have no idea why. It's strange. I bought every kind of glue available, but I held off buying um, important things like an envelope punch board. I didn't buy a corner rounder for a long time. I don't know why. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words about the mermaid kits. I just, I really had a good time working on them and the colors. I'm just, you know, somebody said, well, not, not cutesy. How about, you know, kind of more of a moody mermaid. And so that's, that's what I came up with. And I'm trying a few new techniques to me that I am really excited to go. I think I mentioned this earlier to go explore. I have thousands of photographs that I have taken of mostly birds and I want to explore being able to use those in my journals without them looking like just a photograph. So that's some other new stuff that I'll be working on. But there's a steep learning curve on that because it's an area that I've not done anything with before. So I spend a lot of hours at it and you know get nothing that I really like yet. So wait a minute, I missed something. You don't know how, oh, Lorna, we did this earlier with somebody else. It's the, the biggest thing on using the punch board is just making sure your paper's square. That's what I did not make. And, and don't trust what the paper pad says because I took six inch paper pads thinking that they were actually six inches. And when I measured them later, discovered they were really more like five and a half or five and three eighths. And so all you need to know is this is a five and a half inch sheet of paper and you follow your center size here. We can do for a five and a half by five and a half. I go to a score line of two and three eighths, and that's this little line up here. And I score it. And then each time you turn it, you just line up with that little wedge. You just line up your score line again. There's only one math is just the square of your paper. 
And that's it. Wow. What means when I get rid of all the scrapbook papers, I will have more room on my shelves for making my own papers. Some of these are super thin. I'm not so sure that they're the best use for. Oh, I, I hear you. Nine tubes of Tombow. Oh, Victoria, wow. I am going to try. I have not done it with it yet, but the one thing that I want to use up a lot of scraps on is I want to make some fabric paper. So I am going to try and dilute the Tombow and see if I can use it that way with a brush and maybe use mine up. I've got like six or eight tubes and that's way too many. I just don't want, it is way too wet. But as a base for collage, I think that's the only way to use it. What I need to get better at is figuring out how to get the stinking metal cap on my art glitter glue. I have watched Gail's video a couple times and I still have it leaking out from underneath, so I find it easier to move all of those into smaller bottles. So I have like six small bottles of art glitter glue in, instead of one big one. Wait a minute, I need to page back here. Yeah, so Penelope, Liv's history, yeah, or Penelope, I'm sorry, Penny, Liv's history, and uh, her journals all reflect that, too. Lorna, I'm hopefully you've seen some of Penny's journals. You guys share a lot of similar loves. Yeah, that's, don't remember even buying them. I know what happens to me is I walk into Beverly's, which is the one store we have in a nearby town that has art supplies, and whatever they have on that shelf right as you get ready to check out I'm a sucker for and so if they have a glue there I think oh I can always use more glue and it look it's on sale and then I come home and of course you know it's on sale someplace else it even cheaper so I have learned I can't even go into those places now there's no need to the only place I really want to ever go into is is a thrift shop or an antique shop that might have paper items I'm telling myself that's it that's the only place I want to go into Okay, let's see. These guys are too thin. I'm not going to worry about them. Oh, this is a, a copy of a thin one, but let me show you what I mean. This paper is really thin, so if you're not careful when you go through and you do the score, what you end up with... Oh, that one didn't do it. <laughs> Makes a liar out of me. Oh, no, it's not going to tear. Anyways, a lot of times the thin ones tear on me, so... Oh. Yeah, these are ancient. Look at that paper is so ancient. But it's still good paper. And it might work for some kits. I am feeling pretty jazzed that I was able to get through all of these. And get a catch up with friends at the same time. So I really thank you so much for coming over and hanging with me. Yeah, I have avoided every, like, spring, there's a huge vintage market that is not too far from here. And I'm on the mailing list, so I get the announcements, and I keep thinking I'll go... And then I tell myself, you know, but why? You don't need anything. It's just, it's want versus need. And I need to uh, not tempt myself. All right. Almost, almost. Thanks for hanging with me. And I will probably go get ready for book group which eats tonight we read the book rules for visiting which was an interesting read about friendship and got me thinking about friends and friends I've had for a long time friends I've recently made what it means to be a friend
I find making friends difficult. I am a very, by nature, very shy person, very quiet person. So whenever I go out in public, uh, unless I was speaking, I was fine when I was doing a lot of public speaking for my, you know, to promote my books. That was fine. That was like a different thing. I could put on my writer persona and I would be fine. But that's not usually when you're going out trying to make friends and meet new people. And, um, and I find it harder as I get older, not easier. When my kids were little, you know, you met people because you got young kids together and you're doing little league and school activities and stuff together. And I find it much more difficult to meet people as I get older. So I'm very grateful for my book group here because we've all become friends. Liz, thank you. I think that we would be good friends and we would get into lots of trouble if we lived close together. I already know that. We would make big messes and get into trouble and do a lot of laughter. I think that would be um, that would be a kick. I have had the pleasure of meeting some people I've met online in the past. Not artsy people yet, but I, I expect that could happen, although maybe not as often of an opportunity. But when I was writing and publishing and I had to go promote my books, I would travel. And so I would get to meet people that I had only known online from mailing lists, you know, support groups, you know, writing support groups and stuff. And it's, it's a wonderful experience to meet somebody that you've perhaps been corresponding with for years online. And then you meet them in person and, you know, you don't have to go through that whole getting to know each other stage because you feel like you already know each other. Look at this. It's the last one. Woohoo. Yes. I have no idea how many pieces of paper are here, but all I can say is this is the last of my small pieces of scrapbook paper. So that part of my shelf is now going to be free for other papers. And we have a nice big stack of envelope templates. Awesome. Woohoo! That is a lot of envelopes. They are done. Yes. All right. I'll have to figure out something else that I can work on and come back next time. But I, I am going to try and, and get back here on lives once a week again. That's the plan. Now that my my filming setup is set up properly, I've got the webcam set up all the time. The lights are set up all the time. The only thing that's kind of funky, I should take a picture of this and show you guys. For some reason, the swing arm that I've got my webcam set on keeps wanting to fly up. So I had to weight it down. So I have like a battery charger cord and the heavy part of the charger on part of the swing arm. Just kind of luckily it's out of camera. Um, but it's done. Thank you so much. Penny, yeah, it's the, the whole idea of being able to do these lives and, and chat and, and feel like, you know, you're getting that social time, but you don't have to leave your house. <laughs> and yes, Liz, you are right. It is an abundance and it feels wonderful. And I'm going to have a lot of fun tucking these in the journals, which I can't wait to go to work on next uh, and see, you know, I don't think I have enough to fill them yet, but I think maybe that's what I'll do on the next video is I'll start filling the journals and we'll see what else we want to put in there. But yeah, there's a nice wide variety. I am this first batch of flow journals. I am not going to try and do with themes. So I'm just going to kind of see if I can give a, a mismatch and you guys can be creative with them. So it is done and I am going to go do something else creative. I guess. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed yourself here today. And I, uh, I will be back again as soon as I can. Thanks for watching you guys. I will see you next time. Bye from now. Yes. Great day all.